Witch Trials Weekly, Video 38, September the 30th to October the 6th, 1692. Increase Martha puts his foot down. A Boston man brought his ill child to Salem for spectral diagnosis. The girls blamed the specters of Elizabeth Carey, who'd escaped to New York, and Mary Obson. The justices denied his request for an arrest warrant. Increase Mather confronted this man, and as Marilyn K. Roach paraphrased it, demanded whether the man did not think that there was a god in Boston, that he should go to the devil in Salem for advice. In Salem Village, a dog was acting strangely. The girls said that John Bradstreet's specter was riding it and tormenting it. Although the dog was considered a victim, it was killed. Around this time, another dog was shot in Andover because a girl said that its specter was tormenting her. However, Increase Mather said that had the dog been a devil in disguise, it would not have been able to be killed, and since it had been, it had just been an ordinary dog and thus was incapable of magic. On Monday, October 3rd, a group of ministers gathered at Harvard to hear Increase Mather's essay against the court's use of spectral evidence. It was entitled, Cases of Conscience Concerning Evil Spirits. Cotton Mather most likely read this essay since his father was not present. His key argument was that the devil could impersonate innocent people, be they living or dead. He also believed that while some people did have real spectral sight, others could be given it by the devil. He also said that accusations were not proof of guilt because even Martin Luther and Jesus had once been denounced as wizards. Deathbed accusations were no good, and neither were the accusations the girls made during their fits, because if the girls were not bewitched but rather possessed by demons, then what they said during those fits were the devil's words. Gossiping tongues caused more damage than the eyes. This references the folk belief that a witch's glare or eye beams could shoot out malicious torments to a person they looked at. It was believed back in those days that sight originated within the eye. Increase Mather also thought that the touch test was pointless because he believed that it could be the devil mimicking the true healing powers of Christ. Although he had all these conditions, he did believe in witches and thought that the dangerous ones ought to be exterminated. However, he also wrote, it were better that ten suspected witches should escape than that one innocent person should be condemned. Marilyn K. Roach summed up his argument as, Evidence for witchcraft cases ought to be as clear as for other capital crimes, and no magical folk test was lawful for Christian use. A copy was given to Governor Phipps to read, and others were circulated amongst the people hand to hand. Perhaps now people would listen? Captain John Osgood and Deacon Fry were heartbroken that they had doubted their wives and forced them into confessing. Chief Justice William Stoughton received a petition around this time, which most likely included a statement from six Andover women. In it, they said that they were scared witless and thus had admitted whatever was expected. This included agreeing with whatever the court had said. <laughs> This video was produced with special permission from the author, Marilyn K. Roach, and publisher, Cooper Square Press. The Salem Witch Trials, a day-by-day -day chronicle of a community under siege, covers the years 1692 to 1697 in detail. It also touches briefly on important and relevant events before and after this time. We are proud to carry all of Ms. Roach's books and publications in our museum store. To get a copy for your personal research and enjoyment, please visit www.salemwitchmuseum.com.